before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. If you've been on this channel with me for a while now, you know that I, like many of you, am not a stranger to paranormal phenomenon. And when I first opened up this channel, I covered some stories that took place in a town that I grew up in, a town that I despise to this day. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without you guys, this channel would not be possible. If you would like to join our Patreon or our producer community, a link is down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we're going to be talking about the demons of Rome, Georgia. So again, as I said in the beginning of this video, most of you guys know part of the reason why some of you guys found me here on YouTube is that I'm not a stranger to paranormal phenomenon. And like many of you, we can commiserate on a lot of our experience, our shared experiences growing up in the world of the weird and the wacky, being able to see and experience things that a lot of the people around us do not see or experience. You know, if you've been on this journey with me for a while, that I have covered extensively different bloodlines. And apparently, people like me, who are RH negative, tend to have more paranormal experiences than people who are not. Now, this is not really a secret. If you've looked into bloodlines at all, then you know that there is a lot of conspiracy and a lot of folklore and legend around this mysterious RH negative bloodline that I have, which a lot of you have as well. We're only 15% of the world's population. And oddly enough, a lot of our presidents are most are all of our presidents. Let me correct that. All of our presidents have all been RH negative, as well as all the monarchies. We know that from deep dives done in the past that the monarchy, the powers that be do see the O negative specifically the bloodline, the blood type I carry as being the pure bloodline of the gods. Now, I don't believe this at all, but it is interesting that the elites kind of prioritize this particular bloodline. And the reason why they do is because O negatives have nothing in their blood. I have no rhesus factor in my blood, nor do I have any antigens in my blood, like the A or the B antigen. This means, from a very practical perspective, that I can donate my blood to anybody. Anybody can take my blood, but I can only receive blood myself from other O negatives. My boyfriend is also an RH negative, but he is an A negative, so he does carry the A antigen. Now, if you you know through our past deep dives the reason why i bring this up is because something that i learned when i was studying different blood types and the side effects of these different blood types is that people who are rh negative like myself are often diagnosed with astigmatism i've been diagnosed with astigmatism i have glasses somewhere for for, for my stigmatism, astigmatism. But what I've learned is that that's not necessarily what is happening to RH negatives. What I have learned is that the reason why RH negatives are diagnosed with astigmatism a lot of the time is at the back of our eye. So if you were to look through my pupil at the back of my eye, there is a diamond shape. Whereas people who are not RH negative have a circle shape. So the fact that there's a diamond shape at the back of my eye and other RH negatives, not just me, we take in light 
differently. So that means that we are literally able to see things that other people cannot see simply because our eye is shaped differently. Now, of course, we've gotten into all the conspiracies about these different blood types, where they come from. I believe that the O negative bloodline is the original original Atlantean bloodline. And I think that a lot of the other blood types that have brought, been brought in the A, the B, the AB are coming from different off-worlder groups. And I personally believe that the rhesus factor, which most people have in their blood, was altered, was, was, was done by humans on Earth. I think that the controllers tried to alter people's blood by adding in the rhesus factor in order to dis disconnect them more from God. I think it did backfire, though, because I think a lot of people who are RH positive, it, it didn't work. However, that does explain why most RH negatives have incredible amounts of paranormal phenomenon happen to them that don't tend to generally happen as frequently to people who are RH positive. But with that being said, as most of you guys know, again, if you've been on this channel for a while, I was raised for 14 years of my life. I lived in a town called Rome, Georgia. Rome, Georgia is about an hour north of Atlanta, and it is literally the most disgusting, horrible, awful town you will ever set foot in. It has taken me a very long time. I'm still trying to process all the tra trauma that I experienced in that town, and I still and will probably always carry some anger and resentment towards my parents for not protecting me and leaving me in that horrific town. With that being said, as time has gone on, I and opening up this channel, I have gotten to meet a lot of people, especially a lot of people that are whistleblowers that happen to know a lot more about these satanic towns than I do. I have recently learned that Rome, Georgia is known as the Enchanted Land. I, I knew that. That I've known for a while. It's all over all the signs. But what this basically means, what this basically is signaling is that there is an enchantment spell that has been put on this land. So when I tell you that the Rome, Georgia is gross, I'm actually seeing legitimately what Rome, Georgia is because I am not under the enchantment spell that my family is under. What do I mean by this? If you have been to Rome or know anybody from Rome, you either hear people say how much they love it or they absolutely hate it. The people who tend to love it and think it's beautiful are people who are spellcasted. People like me who see it for what it is are people who are not spellcasted. And therefore, we have to put up with the trauma of seeing what's actually happening in that town. Now, I know that this town is not unique. There are many towns like that all over the nation. I will say another thing about Rome, though, is that it is isolated. I think it is isolated intentionally. That's never a good thing. That's never a good thing. That's a huge red flag. When something is isolated, it's usually isolated for a reason. I-75 North is how you get to Rome, Georgia. However, Rome, Georgia is not off of I-75. You have to actually drive through a couple of other towns and then go on the highway in order to make it to Rome. With that being said, there's no direct path through these towns. You literally have to know how to get there in order to get there, especially in days before GPS. Again, my opinion, this is done very intentionally. Rome, Georgia is also a very wealthy town. There's a lot of money in Rome, Georgia. It's, it's, um, uh... Yeah, it's not a good place. It's it's not a good place. And I did notice growing up, I my, my mom's family is from Charleston, South Carolina, which is like one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And people would, my mom would talk about how pretty Rome is. And I'm like, you're from Charleston. This is a pigsty. This is a trash dump. Well, now I know it's because my mother is under an enchantment spell. So what she's seeing and what a lot of people are seeing in Rome is not actually what's there. What I grew up seeing, I saw a rat infested, disgusting dilapidated town that is what rome georgia really is even though there's a lot of money there it's gross it's gross i was seeing what was really there people who were under the enchantment land spell were not they were seeing an illusion of facade now why was it that i was not put under this spell casting and my family was i don't know maybe because i'm o negative i i don't know that's not i don't have an answer for you there but we moved to Rome when I was four and I left when I was 18, the worst 14 years of my life. I have zero, I tell you guys, I have zero good memories from childhood. When I think about my childhood, I get anxiety, I get traumatized, I start to shake. Anytime I get close to Rome, Georgia today, like if I have to go there, I start to shake. Um, it's it's just, I, I, I that is probably, I, I can't, I will never forgive my parents for, I absolutely know that I can move on but I will always know that my parents did not protect me and they left me to be traumatized in this town. Well, with that being said, as time has gone on, 
I will only go back to Rome for particular reasons for family stuff. I don't like going there. It's not, it, it's when I know I have to go there, it's usually I, I get stressed out. I get snappy and bitchy. Like I don't want to go there, but I'll go when I have to. Well, a few years back. So my boyfriend that I have now, he, again, he's also RH negative and he's very sensitive to spiritual stuff too. And whenever he would go to Rome with me, I could tell he's also very introverted though, but he didn't like being there. Like we would go and then he would want to leave as quickly as we could. Like he did not, you know, other places we go together, like up to the mountains or to his family land in Florida, anywhere else we've gone or other vacations we've gone on with my family. He's totally comfortable, totally happy, totally fine. But whenever I would go with him to Rome, he was fidgety. He was always looking over his shoulder. You could tell he was not comfortable. And once we had done whatever we were there to do, he would be the one like, let's leave. Let's get out of here. And I think he held back. He held his tongue a lot because he didn't want to freak me out even more. But I could definitely tell that he was not comfortable there. Well, flash back a couple of years ago and my cousin gets married. So I have a cousin who does not live in Rome. Um, I only have one cousin that actually lives in Rome now. Most of them do not live in the Rome, Georgia area at all. But I had a cousin who was getting married to a girl who was also from Rome. And so they picked a venue on the outskirts of Rome in this beautiful little farm area where, you know, it wasn't technically in Rome. It was more towards Rock Mart. But my boyfriend and I were going to stay at my parents' house for the wedding. So we go, we spend the day getting ready. We go to the wedding. We watch the ceremony, we go to the party afterwards, and we're there, and, and we, we decide, you know, we're up super early in the morning for Brahma Morta, so we get tired easily. So towards dusk, um, we decide to go ahead and leave. Now, I had been drinking, so my boyfriend was going to drive. He didn't drink. And so we're driving to my, my boyfriend's driving the car to my parents' house. I'm sitting with my head down looking at my phone, and all of a sudden, we're on these back roads. There's nobody around. It's just us. It's still light outside. All of a sudden, my boyfriend slams on the brakes, says WTF, puts the car in park, gets out of the car, and I'm watching him walk back in front and forth in front of the car, looking under the car, looking in the sides of the road in the ditch. All the color is gone off of his face. I don't know what's happened. He then gets back in the car, shuts the door, looks at me, and goes, did you see that? And I said, what? What did you see? You didn't see that? Did you not see that? But before we get into what he saw, let's take a brief moment for a word from our sponsors, because like our awesome Patreon Patreons, our sponsors help keep the lights on here at Esoteric Atlanta, and I'm so excited to have Spooky 2 be a sponsor of Esoteric Atlanta because Spooky 2 is a rife machine that is literally helping people all over the world, including your pets, my friends. And so I'm going to have you hold tight for a second and listen to this testimony about a furry friend of ours that was helped by Spooky 2. If you are interested in Spooky 2 for yourself and for your family, you can enter Bryce Watson at checkout through the Spooky 2 website to get 5% off of your purchase. All of that information is down in the description box below, a direct link to Spooky 2's website. I will also put another video in the description box with Brad from Spooky 2, who gives even more information about these incredible rife, rife machines in case you want to learn more about this product. But just hang tight for one moment before we get back to our story as we listen to a furry friend whose life was changed by Spooky 2. Welcome to the Ricky Zen Den. I'm here with my dog Bourbon, and he wanted to share a little bit about his story so that we can help other pet parents know that there are other holistic and alternative methods out there to helping your dog on their road to recovery and healing. So a little bit about Bourbon's story. We had him, um, he was running, let's say, and it was a, a rainy day, and he went to run up the steps, and he 
skipped a step and landed spread eagle and left out a huge yelp. Um, so thankfully, my son carried him down the steps for me, got him in the car, and we took him right to the vet. So they confirmed that he did, in fact, severely tear, um, basically completely, both of his ACLs, or what's called a CCL in dog lingo. And they said that he needed surgery to heal and recover. However, he was only eight months old at the time, and they would not do surgery on him because his growth platelets were still open in his legs. So they sent me home with an injured dog and said, bring him back when he's a year old, and they would do the surgery. Now, the surgery, mind you, was going to cost $5,000 per leg and two months recovery in a crate while he was recovering. And the surgery had to be done one leg at a time. So that would be $10,000 and four months of him being in a crate. That doesn't sound like a good solution to me. So I encourage you to go to Spooky2 and download their software just to kind of look around and see if maybe your ailments are in the database because I bet you they are. So now let's get into it. So the first thing I did with bourbon is I took the connectors and I hooked him up to the TENS pads. So what I did is I took the TENS pads and I placed them on the inside of his thigh by where his knee is. So right around where the actual ACL or CCL would be located. And then I ran what we call a biofeedback scan. The biofeedback scan in the database, what it does is it sends electromagnetic frequencies into your electromagnetic field within your body. Anything that is not supposed to be there, it calls a hit. So it records up to 10 hits per biofeedback scan. It takes about five or six minutes and boom, you have your, your results. So then once I record and save those hits, I turn around and I switch it to contact mode, keeping the tens pads in the exact same spot that I just ran the biofeedback scan. And then I run a 30 minute contact session for him. Now, he feels so amazing when he's getting these frequencies that if I'm in messing with the Rife Therapy machine and getting something ready maybe for myself or a client, he will actually come over and be like, hey, thinking he's going to get a session. That's how much he loves it because he knows it's making him feel better. So my boyfriend gets back in the car after he thought he had hit something, but he hadn't. There was nothing there on the road. There was nothing under the car. And he proceeds to tell me with all the color gone from his face that this humanoid entity, this all black, three, three density, like third density, three dimensional entity ran in front of the car and he thought he had hit it. And that's why he slammed on his brakes. He realized though, that this was not human, that this was something that was paranormal and he was shooketh. Now again, my boyfriend has had plenty of paranormal experiences in his life. I mean, he could write a book on all these things, but this incident really upset him. And when he's telling me this story, I just started laughing. And he's looking at me like, why are you laughing? I'm like, dude, those entities are all over Rome, Georgia. I was like, welcome to my childhood. I have a memory of sitting on the levee with my father. There's a levee in Rome, Georgia, over one of the rivers, and literally fighting with my dad because there were demons, I called them demons, that were swinging from the trees like monkeys. And I was trying to convince my father to see them because they were everywhere. There are so many demons. It's like, they're like squirrels. They're just everywhere in Rome, Georgia. As a child, I had to get used to the fact that I was the only one in my immediate family who could actually see these things. And I definitely had scratch marks to prove it, but my parents could never see it because as I know now, they're under an enchantment spell. 
Since then, I have met even more people through our yoga shala, through other business opportunities here in Atlanta that also grew up in Rome, Georgia. These were people that grew up in Rome, Georgia at different times than me, some of them younger than me. And through conversation with each other, we've now discovered that we both had the same experiences. More and more and more people are coming out of the woodwork who grew up in that area that had the exact same childhood that I did. They saw all the demons. They saw that Rome was a piling g- g- crap pile shoot, like an ugly ass town. It's ugly. Like Rome is ugly. Like you guys, you know, that movie they live where he like puts the sunglasses on and he can see the truth. That's Rome, Georgia, except for, I feel like the people who are under the enchantment spell, the enchantment, the enchanted land spell have sunglasses on rose colored glasses on that force them to see things that aren't actually there. I don't know what they're seeing. Cause I see a dump like Rome's a dump. Like, it's a literal dump. It smells bad. It smells disgusting. It's thick and hot. And the river, like, there's gross stuff that comes out of the river. Downtown is, like, rat infested. It's disgusting. Like, it is just, you know how they show pictures of downtown LA now with, like, the fire pits and the and the trash cans and all that sc- stuff and all the homeless people? That's, like, what Rome, Georgia really looks like. So I don't know what people are seeing that think it's beautiful. Um... I don't know. I don't know what they're seeing because I'm seeing what Rome really looks like. And there's, and of course, there's demons running around everywhere too. And if you know anything about demonic activity, you know that where black magic is practiced is always going to be gross. It's always going to be a gross area because like attracts like, right? The energy has to match the vibra- vibrational energy of what you're doing. So of course, Rome, Georgia is disgusting. It's one of the... <laughs> pinnacles of satanic practice that's a fact you can look that up when i was in my mid-20s after i'd left rome i left rome in 2001 when i was in my mid-20s after i'd gone to school i was living out in los angeles and this is right when the internet got big like there was now this google machine right and so i started to really contemplate my childhood and everything that i had experienced and i started to google like just curious like For some reason, my gut told me that this had to do with Satanism. Even though we were not in the Great Awakening yet, we didn't know about all the powers that be and all that kind of stuff, I Googled it and I learned in my 20s just from Googling it that yes, statistically speaking, Rome, Georgia has the highest amount of Satanic practitioners per capita. A lot of it coming from Barry College. That's a story for a different day that I can talk about on another day. But um, yeah, it's a satanic pinnacle. And so that is a paranormal story time story from my childhood. I grew up in the land of demons. I finally had validation from my boyfriend and other people who have also shared this experience with me. I now understand, thank you to whistleblowers who have reached out to me, that Rome, Georgia is the enchanted land because it is under an enchantment spell. And the reason why my parents could not protect me, and the reason why my parents both look like they have their zombies when they're in Rome, like they're 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 everybody from Rome looks like they, it's weird. Like when you go into Rome, you feel like you're in a cult because people have this weird, like they're gone. Like there's nothing in their eyes. And that is something other people have validated with me too before. They're like, yeah, I know that's fucking weird. Isn't it? Like all these people that live in Rome, it's like, they're, they're like, they're like not there. Like they're not, it's the most beautiful place on earth. Rome is so great. It's weird. It is like cult shit. It's weird. Um, but that's because of an enchantment spell. They're under an enchantment spell. So anyway, you guys, I wanted to share that quick little story time with you guys. We, got, we love a paranormal a paranormal story. At this point in my life, my boyfriend and I have made the decision that we will no longer be returning to Rome, Georgia. It doesn't matter if we miss Christmases. It's it's for safety purposes, and we just don't want to be around that. It's not worth it. And so if my family wants to visit, they got to come to Atlanta because that's a boundary I have. I'm not going to get involved in the satanic shit that's going on in Rome. I don't want to be a part of it. I don't have heritage there. It's not. I have no lineage in Rome. None of my ancestors are from Rome. I can wipe my hands of it. Good riddance. Good riddance to the lot of you. I really hope the people in Rome wake up and realize that they're in a peep of trouble living there. Please be careful. If you are considering moving to this town or any town, please do your research. Please, 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 please. Because if you research Rome, Georgia thoroughly, you will know that this is this is a normal thing in Rome, that this is very common and that there is a high number of practicing Satanists in Rome. So I just would be very, very mindful of that. So anyway, guys, if you have any stories that you want me to share on this channel or any stories from your hometown growing up that you want me to look into, let me know. Send me an email, esotericatlanta at gmail.com because I do want to start covering more personal paranormal stories and urban legends. So just let me know if that's something you want me to do. If you have stories from Rome, Georgia yourself, if you grew up in Rome, Georgia yourself and you want to do a big round table with all the 
people who could see the truth about Rome, Georgia, let me know too. Just send me an email at esotericatlanta at gmail.com. Put Rome, Georgia in the subject line and we can work that out or we can do a big round table with all these people who've had these experiences because I have learned the more times you share your experience with the world, the better the world gets. And the more people who also have these same experiences feel more comfortable talking about their own experiences and we can all help each other heal from the horrific things that we have been through in places like Rome, Georgia. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. 